guys. Uh, welcome for a quick chat in the dark room. Um, I'm here, just recorded a video or a few videos um, outside the studio. And I came into the dark room, I thought I could do a quick chat. Last time I did it on Patreon only, and um, not a lot of people were there online. So I thought if you guys want to ask a few questions, I'm going to give it like 10 minute video, maybe a little bit more. But yeah, I'm going to be cleaning a bit and doing stuff. So if you guys want to join me and we can talk and have some questions, let me know. Meanwhile, I'm going to start um, picking up from last time I was here. I was doing some 8x10 developing, um, which I've been doing a lot lately. And um, if you have any questions, let me know. But yeah, this is basically the dark room. You've seen like 100 tours of this dark room. Um, but yeah, it's... When I'm running it big time, it actually requires a lot more um, space to dry, especially. So I use the Jobo to dry either the first dry or the second dry. Because I have a drying rack here, but it doesn't do a lot of work. So yeah, that, I put them all away. I keep the reels inside the Jobo tanks to keep them dust uh, free. And that way there's no issues. I use Jobo for everything, um, if you guys were wondering, mostly because it's really simple, it takes a lot less chemistry as it's rotation, so the tank doesn't have to have chemistry all the way up, just a little bit, and um, for color and stuff like that, it works great. Hey Layton, nice to see you. Um, sorry for the awkward timing for the live stream. Um, How says, do you wipe the prints before putting them on the rack? Yes, how? I usually have, I have a little Ikea, uh, one euro little squeegee here. Um, it's extremely cheap. Just make sure you keep this uh, dust free because if you have any dust, I have scratched a few prints before, but I put it on the print washer. I wash it with water. I put the print against and very carefully a squeegee, very slightly, not a lot from there. I bring the wet prints all the way here to my drying rack, which is a homemade mosquito net kind of thing. Um, as you can see, I've been working um, a lot on Fiberbase. This is part of the Kickstarter rewards. Sorry for the reflections. This is the Intrepid team there, um, and there are 8x10 prints. There's also a picture of Max and me. Um, for those who are on Kickstarter, this is still working. I'm still working on it. Um, this requires a lot of time to do this. Drying, flattening. I'm probably going to do another live stream when I have them to flatten the prints in the, um, in the outside where I have my dry uh, racking. Let me see. Oop, sorry. Um, Lathan, no, it's a holiday here. I have, I had to work today. I don't have mine watching. Ilford paper, yes. All the paper I use is always Ilford Warm Tone. Um, I think it's the glossy. So yeah, glossy. Let's see if you guys can see that there. My phone decides to see. Well, Ilford Warm Tone Glossy. This is 8x10. I usually buy the 250 um, sheet boxes, which they only have in the US. So when I'm in Europe, I buy the 100 boxes. This one still has like half the box. Uh, one thing that a lot of people <coughs> maybe don't know is um, prints or paper will vary between different ships. For example, if I buy this uh, box today and in six months I buy a different box, a print that looks good in this paper won't look good exactly the same in the next uh, paper. So make sure you always use the same paper for continuous uh, work. So if I'm doing a run of 10 prints, I'll use a box that's new. If I'm going to do a one print and there's five sheets, maybe I won't even start for that. I'll do a few contact prints for fun, but that's it. Or maybe some test prints or something like that. Don't mix paper. I've practiced, for example, um, test sheets with 8x10 and then done a proper print on 11, uh, 16 by 20 to save money. And the print looked totally different to what I had done. So all the previous work was waste. I had to adjust to the 16 by 20 in paper wasted a sheet of paper which is really expensive and learned the hard way so yeah this is the paper i use um i've been doing uh postcards for those who might want to get some i'll have a online 
postcard print uh, store on my website. But these are really fun. They come with a back print uh, for stripping them through the normal mail. And they're RC paper and I'm doing 4x5 contact prints. So that's what I've been doing lately. Another thing I do use, which is extremely fun and easy, is a paper safe. Uh, this is like the best invention in a darkroom. These are extremely cheap Jobo versions. They don't make them anymore. So maybe you'll find them online. But paper safe, you just open it and close it and it just closes on its own. You won't fog any paper by accident. Uh, Lathan says, yeah, no shortcuts between paper sizes. Yeah, Ilford is just the one I've been using. Also, for those who have been following my large format work lately, I've been doing a lot of Fomapan 100 and actually even broke out some, let's see if that will work, some Provia. Can you see that? Provia. Um, I'll be doing some work and videos on 8x10 Provia and developing and screwing up um, my metering because I forgot how uh, unforgiving slide film is. So 8x10 work has been coming around a lot. And yeah, so that's basically uh, what I do here in the darkroom. <coughs> For those who don't know, um, this whole darkroom was made by me. It's inside kind of an office space. Um, I call it a studio because it's kind of a photography studio, but it's kind of like an office space. So there was no running water, there was no drain, there was electricity, but it was office electricity, so I had to change things a bit. Um, we have the enlargers here and all of that. Jobo Automatic, I have a Jobo CPP3 under there. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to come and kind of pick up a little bit because I dry everything and then I never have the space. I have to do some shelving around so as soon as I do the shelves, I'll do a proper introduction to the whole darkroom and why it is how it is. But yeah, I've been doing some C41 too, which I haven't done in forever, um, and E6. So hopefully it won't only be black and white on my channel. Hey, Andrew. Hey, um, Daniel. Let me see. If you guys are ever in doubt about what tank to use for developing uh, 4x5, this is the Jobo 3010. Um, I don't know if it will focus there. Best tank ever. So it does 10 sheets of 4x5 and it uses very little chemistry, super easy to load, and it looks amazing. Uh, Danielle says, what's the rarest film have you ever used? Um, yeah, this thing does look like it launches grenades. These tanks open with air pressure, but you can open them with your hands. Um, rarest film I've ever used, probably the infrared um, color film, the one that um, Richard Moss uh, made his project about Congo. It, it's extremely rare, basically because it's extremely expensive, even though the FPP um, Film Photography Podcast store has it in 35. It's expensive, I think around $30 a roll, but it's actually really fun to shoot. Um, but rare, rare, I haven't shot anything too rare. Uh, I tend to stick to what's still available because I there's nothing I dislike more than having a film that I really enjoy and then knowing that I won't be able to buy more. Um, I'm into shooting film in the long run. I'm not shooting film just for the satisfaction of shooting one roll of one thing and then the next day a different thing. So I buy HP5 and 35 in 120 and 8x10. Um, I buy some FOMA 108 and 8x10 because it's much cheaper and it's fun. Um, and yeah, that's what I shoot mostly. Um, you can see here, there's an empty box of Foma Pan uh, 100, which for large format work, this film is extremely uh, good. I wouldn't say extremely good, but it's really uh, inexpensive and does great results. So I've been using a lot of this. Um, comes with a plastic bag, no triple box in there. Uh, hey Federico. Um, and it comes with this little paper envelope. A uh, good thing about this is this is a one sheet um, some people, Ilford, I think, or no, Kodak has a, a different sheets, and I've seen more than one person load the cardboard to try to expose. 
So yeah, and about the infrared, worth it? Yeah, it's worth it. Uh, the problem is you can't really print it as slides anymore. So a C41, it's not so uh, intense, you know, the difference in like the colors. But yeah, um, it's worth it, I would say. I think everything in film is fun and worth it. What developer does your HP5 go into? Um, my HP5 goes into Kodak HC110. Uh, if you see it labeled with Nico, um, it's because we're a few people in this darkroom. And um, HC110 uh, will run forever. <laughs> uh, the Cantrell project is running on the treadmill while watching this. Yeah, I should be running on the treadmill while I do this. Uh, but HC110, don't worry about the color. It's just as good when it's yellow, just as good when it's dark orange. I never had issues. Um, another thing that I think is really important in the darkroom, and you see that label maker, is this little um, demo label maker. And nowadays everyone does this um, with um, heat paper, like thermal paper, but that paper will fog with heat, will fog with time, will fog with chemistry. So if you're using chemistry and stuff, this is the kid version. And um, it's pretty easy, just punch whatever you wanna write. So for example, I punch my name, I punch the chemistry, I punch everything that I need to have a reminder. So there you go, live. The V came out wonky. But yeah, you see these tanks from Jobo for E6, color developer, Blix, I don't know, you can see that, BX, um, stabilizer, and such. Really good fun. Um, let me see. Oh, these comments keep on disappearing on my phone. I uh, used for that for a long time, but they banned that in Japan. Oh my god, they didn't know they banned uh, HC110. I heard about people stalking in Japan. Um, let me see. Brian says, ever try shooting X-ray 8x10 film? I saw good portraits with it and it's cheap. Um, both um, Emotion on both sides. Yeah, they ha I do shoot um, that format. And let me see if I can find... Um, let me see. Give me one sec to see if I can find it. I shoot it in 11 by 14. Um, when I want to shoot basically 11 by 14 film is really expensive and in Europe you can't find it barely unless it's the Ilford run which is right now happening till like May 26th. So I actually use x-ray film in 11 by 14. And it's very easy to scratch. It has double emulsion. You got to peel it or bleach it. And uh, I find it very finicky. And I haven't yet controlled it. I develop it in these tanks, which are huge. And oh, these tanks are a big hollow hole. You see the ridges on the sides? Those are for different formats of paper but you can do film here. The thing is when you're doing normal film, it has the back side of the film has the anti halation layer and that won't be prone to scratching easily. But when you're doing x-rays, those ridges will mark the emulsion and uh, it'll scratch basically uh, your negatives. So yeah, x-ray film is fun, but I haven't found my system. I have to try it on tray developing. Um, Eric, what paper do I print on? I just said that, but basically, Ilford Warm Tone Glossy Finish, uh, fiber base. Sorry guys, let me see, these comments disappear. Tom Sawyer, one question about easels. I am searching for a 50 by 60 easel in a while, but I can't find one at normal price. Large easels are so rare and very expensive. Can you recommend some? So. Close this. So easels, um, we have three large easels in this darkroom. You can't see them. There's one there, which is a Sounders um, 20 by 24 inch, 50 by 60, which is what you're looking for. Um, the one here is the same, but someone painted it black. And then the one I have is a Costner, um, let me see, yeah. 
Costner 50 by 50. They're extremely hard to find and it's true. All you have to do is keep your eyes peeled. Uh, put um, wanted to buy messages on Facebook groups, Stark room groups, anything like that. And um, it, it looks, I mean, it's easy to find if you have patience. Um, this one here, oh, it's just full of stuff. But yeah, these uh, are hard to find. Try making yourself one like Layton was saying. But um, so far, I think it's being patient. I was waiting for one for over a few years and suddenly the easel and my print washer, which is out of the frame here, popped on um, a local forum and I bought them both for 500 euros. So 250 for the washer, 250 for the easel. And it might be, no, actually the easel, no, it was my, yeah, easel and the print washer. It's just the same guy sold me the, um, the heat um, press for an awesome price too. Those are really hard to find too. But yeah, and um, let me see, someone was saying about, dark. Eric Dan said, just got a box of um, Ilford Dark Tone. Doesn't look too warm in deck toll. I use, uh, uh, let me see, okay. I use, don't mind the color, this one's old. I use Ilford Multigrade Developer. I buy them in five liters because I usually print and uh, do quite a lot. You can see I'm very clean with my chemistry uh, pouring. But yeah, this makes it pretty warm. Um, on its own, you won't see it so warm, but when you compare it to a normal paper or to the white border of uh, a, print, a print frame or anything like that, you'll see the warmth. It's so subtle. I like it being subtle. Um, I'm not a big fan of those very strong dark papers and also when you uh, tone paper to those reddish colors, it's not my favorite. So I keep it just normal, multigrade and then selenium um, toning, but only for um, endurance, not for the, the color. So yeah. <coughs> um, any other questions, guys? We're running into 17 minutes. Don't want to make it too long for whoever joins later. Um, plus, I have to pick up the whole setup, which is behind that wall. Um, let me see. Yeah, you can see something similar with tea stain. Yeah, I've done only staining with cyanotypes, and um, it took away the blue color, and then I toned it with some tea, and it actually looked really nice. Um, the browns look very nice and I want to continue trying stuff with that as soon as I can. I want to make um, a UV light source here so I can do uh, alternative processes. So yeah, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to continue picking up and uh, we'll see each other on the live stream on Wednesday. I won't miss this one. And tomorrow in the news. Um... Eric says, I use Fuji AEG Guard for stabilizing print. Maybe a Japan only thing. Never heard of that in Europe at least, but yeah. So yeah, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this quick chat in the darkroom. I'll try to make more uh, if possible. Let me know if there's something specific you wanna see. Um, outside we have the digital and the flattening stuff. I probably will go live next time I have to flatten prints because I have like a hundred to flatten. So yeah, thanks guys, see you tomorrow.